This conference will now be recorded. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Call to order the February 21st, 2024 special meeting. Call to order at 6.03 p.m. Any additions or uh, corrections to the agenda tonight? <laughs> corrections nope. toward the council. There's none. No. Anyone would like to make a motion to accept the agenda? Of council. I'll move to accept the agenda. Thank you. Is there a second? Open. Seconded by Councilor Webb. Okay, Councilor Wagner? Aye. Councilor Norman? Aye. Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councilor Webb? Aye. Councilor Ash? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Well, welcome tonight. And without further ado, we'll turn it over to John. Thank you very much. So welcome everyone. Um, my name is John Champlin. I'm a landscape architect with a company called MV5. We have civil engineering, uh, environmental survey. We kind of do it all in terms of land development projects. Um, one of the things we do is design campgrounds and they use facilities. So uh, happy to, uh, to have been brought on for this project. Uh, it's an honor. And I know this is a big, big project for the city, and uh, it's a big deal for us to be a part of it with you. Um, just a little bit of background on the project. Our our contract is fund our contract is funded through an uh, OD, OPRD, sorry, OPRD uh, grant for the design. We're going to be applying for a follow-up grant for construction first. Um, what we have presented tonight is the 30% package. Um, it is very much a first draft, and as you will notice, there are multiple iterations. Our goal tonight is to get your feedback on the preferred program for the park, meaning what types of campsites you'd like to see. Um, we'd like to know how many campsites you want. Um, that wasn't given to us, so we presented a, a couple of different options there. We'd like to know a preferred layout for the campground. So we've presented three, three alternatives there. Um, and then we would like to get into a little bit of the details discussion about restrooms, potential paving, uh, parking, how much parking you want to see, uh, connection, potential connections to the, to the trail, the banks from the trail around the perimeter, around the perimeter of the lake, those sorts of things. Um, we'll start off by looking at the existing conditions, then we'll work through the alternatives, uh, kind of dig into the details a little bit, and uh, discuss potential phasing of the project, uh, answer any questions. We're going to have a voting exercise at the end. Um, we're going to tap, we're going to attach voting sheets on every poster around the room and everybody's going to get voting stickers. So that's how we're going to ultimately uh, get your voice uh, heard and tally on this project. So let's jump in to the existing uh, conditions. I guess before we get started, any questions? All right. So I think you're all probably very familiar with this location. Uh, based on what I've heard from you said, uh, this project has kind of been in the works for a while. So the primary access will be the existing entrance off of uh, East Ridge Street that uh, comes into the park. Um, that is currently all paved. There's an existing restroom, um, some parking. There's a there's a kiosk sign, boat ramp, um, access to the trail. There's also a, a host site, an ice cream stand. Doesn't show up on this aerial, but we know that's there. We just saw it, uh, and we've heard about it as well. Um, the dark, solid white line is sort of the general uh, context for where the project will be built. Uh, that is not set in stone, but we do want to keep you know a buffer um, from the trail and. We also know um, that 
Josette owns the property just to the south. It's currently private, private property. So um, we set that as a boundary just to limit any you know, liabilities or anything there. There's the existing uh, sewer lift station, which is actually kind of nice for our project because we want to have a restroom. So um, having, having that lift, lift station nearby is, is, a, is a big benefit for us. Um, one key piece of the project is the old remnant foundation of the wigwam burner. So that's the dash, white line, uh, big circle. We heard from Joseph that the idea, the original idea that kind of brought this project forward was let's configure some campsites around that, that old feature, um, which is a very cool uh, remnant of, of the mill. Um, and so we have kept that intact in all of our, in all of our concepts. All right, let's jump into first one. Again, before we dive into the design, I do want to reiterate these are drafts. These are meant to have your have your uh, revisions made here this evening. Um, we don't we do not expect that one specific iteration is is going to move forward in its entirety. We're probably going to end up with some variation of all three really is how it might, might go. With also potentially additional things that you, that you tell us tonight. So these are drafts. Uh, option A, um, the access drive would uh, come off of the existing paved parking area at the entrance, uh, would maintain Keynote F, it's hard to see on the screen, but Keynote F is the existing gravel parking area right up next to the to the lake um, this option maintains that in, in its place um, as you enter into the site there will be a, a host site along the left side um, that will be an rv spot um, which would be a, uh, a 45 to 50 foot length by 10 foot width of paved area and um, you know, a picnic and, and uh, fire area for the host. Um, the uh, the entry would come directly into at a ninety degree into the wigwam and kind of clean that up, um, make that you know more visible than it is today. It's it's you know basically covered in moss and grown over. We kind of clean up that perimeter, make it a feature, and uh, we would locate a one way um, drive around that. Around that facility, right? And the is the host site G then? That's correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll try to speak to the keynotes better. So um, immediately off the entrance, keynote D would be the restroom facility, um, ADA compliant. We've got some options for restrooms that we'll go through later, but that's essentially the location for the restroom. Uh, we've numbered the. Uh, the campsites, the yellow are ADA compliant sites. So those would be concrete uh, paved for a picnic table, um, firing adjacent to them, and an ADA uh, uh, parking. The orange site, and there's two ADA, ADA sites. The orange sites, of which there are five, um, are RV back in. Again, those are 45 and 50 feet, um, deep by 10 feet. We kind of work with the city. We currently have them at 45, but that's that's flexible. Um, the remainder of the sites, of which there are 11, are all tent sites, and those are green. So um, in this option, we show those as all stacked parking. Some of those are single parking. Some of those are double. Some of them are. 40 to 45 feet deep, so you can stack uh, double parking. Um, each one of those would have uh, plenty of room for one to two tents, depending on how many parking stalls there are, picnic table, and fire ring. Uh, one thing that we've looked at in this is we tried to maintain as many of the existing trees as we could. There's, whole, there's actually not a whole lot uh, to the north of the wigwam burner or kind of to the northeast, but there are a few kind of to the south and southwest. 
Um, so we tried to maintain as many of those as possible. Um, one thing that this concept shows is a trail connection to the banks around the trail. Go ahead. So you guys are, we're talking, you're talking about keeping a barrier between the path and the lake, that little privacy barrier. Are you talking like using the, uh, the Blackberry kind of like as your natural barrier that are already existing really tall and it's kind of, the campground would kind of be tucked behind those? Yeah. So are those two up against the trail there? Um, are those 10 sites then? They would be. They would be. Mm -hmm. So that's just put it up against the back side of the, of the Blackberry line. That's essentially. Okay, yeah. cool. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, so this one um, would have a trail connection. So, if, you know, people were camping, they could directly access the trail. Um, one thing that these concepts do not show is signage. That's kind of our next level of detail once we once we nail down a concept. The, you know, that trail access would be signed, no access for public, you know, only for campers to, to come onto that trail. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so that, that um, kind of secondary, secondary loop would also be a one way. Um, the majority of the time, people that are coming to camp, they're gonna park and they're probably gonna leave their car for most of the time. If, if they do leave, they're just ready to find the exit anyway, so. So where was the bathroom? I, you, you don't have a pointer, I said. It's, no. It's D. D, the yeah, white you box. can see D. The white box, of course. So. It's the first one on the drive in. Right there. Okay. <laughs> it's been seen before. Right. That's, That's the bathroom. bathroom. So, yeah. What is B? What? That's oh. the sewer. That's a sewer That's pump the station. Sewer. Okay. That's fenced but Which, down there with green fencing. Okay. Is a big reason why the restroom is in that mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It would be yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, it's not all that difficult to go with the handicap. And the restrooms, we're thinking these are going to be prefab units. They show up on the semi crane and the play sheds. Yeah, they're they're pretty plumbed, ready to go. So that's concept A. Let's go ahead and move on to concept B. Can I ask you one other question? Sure. So with all of these, uh, do we have water in these locations? It, we're not really at that level of detail. It's kind of, step two of kind of a question for you know what we Kim, are you what the city wants to see? Are you asking about like hookups? Because you would have like one central spigot in a typical campground. Or what water are you talking about? I'm just trying to figure out if there's water on the uh, or if, there was, if there's water available. At one point, you talked about no water being used. So oh, no. Public Works has already talked, they've already yeah. been brainstorming water and sewer. You gotta have, yeah. you gotta have some kind of central water source That's, there. That was my yes. Mm -hmm. That will be built in in the next iteration, depending on how we configure the ground. I think you guys. I think the originally the water question became whether or not the uh, RV spots would have water. Just can't The idea is that the that the restroom would be flushable with the water. Yeah. So. All right. So we're on concept B. So uh, one thing I failed to mention, Concept A had a total of 18 campsites. Concept B does as well. Um, in this concept, uh, access drive coming the same from the same location, obviously. Uh, that's keynote A. We did take out the parking in this concept. Um, that's that's one difference. Um, we have we have a uh, paved parking lot on that entrance, um, which would service the campground, but could also service the public depending on uh, vacancies in the campground. The, uh, the camp post site would be Kino F. It would be off to the right as you would enter. Um, this layout actually kind of works pretty well for the camp post because it would allow them to pull through from the gravel. Uh, we've maintained that gravel uh, access along the north for maintenance for the city, um, <laughs> and then the uh, the pull through ability for the uh, camp post. Um, you know, D 
would be the restroom. So it's kind of off to the left, right upon arrival. Um, again, wanting to locate that on the north side, closer to the lift station. We have 188 uh, compliant campsite. That's the yellow uh, number one. We have 11 uh, tent standard tent sites in green, and those are going around the loop of the wigwam. Again, this would be a one-way loop. Um, what that does is it eliminates a width of paving, kind of reduces cost, um, and also helps to organize circulation and, and keeps people kind of going one way. Um, this concept, one big difference, there's no RV, but we did include six yurt sites. Um, those would be uh, sites where you would park in the parking lot and walk to your walk to your yurt. Um, each one of those would still have a picnic table and a, and a fire. So you're saying that the parking, so just in the top right corner there, mm -hmm. um, further over to the right, 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 or that area that's now parking at the lake area, you're saying that that would be absorbed into the campground area in this model? Right, we would just re basically scrape the gravel and revegetate that to kind of the negative. Gotcha. Kind of, again, kind of creating more of that buffer. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Yeah, because so I, I'm very, very connected with people at the lake and from out of town and all that stuff. Been here for a while in that area, and uh, a lot of them can't walk far, so they use that area down below there to park as far toward the back of the lake as they can get to, so it eliminates some of that walk. Mm -hmm. So in this concept, would they be able to park in the campground parking area back there if the, in this design? It it would really come down to how the yurts are programmed. So um, kind of a standard year would sleep four to five people. They're usually going to show up in one car, but sometimes they might show up in two. So depending on how the city wanted to manage that, we have six sites, six year sites. Um, imagine six to, let's say, nine cars. Yeah, you have to zoom around. Ten nine cars, yeah. Overflow dedicated. Um, we, we currently have 10 parking spaces. That could grow. That could grow. We could add parking. Uh, we could reconfigure the parking to accommodate, you know, um, late users. Um, but again, this concept really was trying to focus on more of that buffer. Absolutely. So we also did not include a connection to the trail so, in this concept. So it really, it really would kind of create more of an enclave of that camp, that true campground experience, mm -hmm. not necessarily tied to the lake or directly um, to the trail or other facilities. Well, your tool, I think it was a priority for Columbia County, right? Yeah, I, I have my concerns about managing and logistics, but. Yeah, but I mean, that was one of the things. Yeah, that they liked it. But they're not managing it. Yeah, yeah, they're, I, I, I know they're a desirable amenity for, for people to see and to use. Um, how the city wants to manage them is a big question. So they, they can be heated, they don't have to be heated. Um, I wouldn't recommend running water to them. I, I would really look at it as more of a permanent, you know, permanent tent. Um, but the big, the big one is the heat. Uh, what that does is it makes it 365, you can run uh, year round because people, you know, people do see camping. <laughs> so, that's and, and that. the, uh, and the, each of them appeals to a different group, and that would have really appealed to your bike riders and the people that are using the trail. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a great enhancement for that mm -hmm. But it's not appealing to the handicapped RV needs. Yeah, and, and like the first concept that had that trail coming out of the campground that connects with the Banks Linear Trail, we have, you're talking about year round, the RV sites would make up, be able to still be able to camp there in the winter. And that there's a bike, there's a bike station that we put on the bike repair station down there. Right. And so on that connecting trail, they'd be able to come up without interfering with the parking lot, having to go around everything. So that's that kind of thing. Yeah, the accessibility kind of makes it wider and more open. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So let's jump to concept option C. This is our largest. This has 26 sites total. Um, this is really, while it keeps the wigwam burner in place, just like all of them, it's kind of the least responsive to the wigwam. Uh, it's more of really just kind of a traditional camp loop. So um, right off the entrance, keynote age would be would actually be general public parking. So um, it's hard to read the keynote G, but um, Stefan, if you could, yeah, right there, that would actually be a day use picnic shelter, so, so, yeah. um, which could be rentable, another revenue source of the, of the city. Um, it could also be first come, first serve when it's not reserved. <laughs> um, but you could put, you know, two or three picnic tables under there and have uh, people that aren't camping reserve it, people who are camping. So, <clears throat> sorry, I've been on this project since the, I walked in with Skip Goodman with the, the original concept was to do this project before COVID in the year, um, year before. And I, I'm looking at this model, and you're saying there's 20. <laughs> That's correct. We couldn't get our head past 12 when we walked in. <laughs> and I'm sitting here looking at this like, where do you, I mean, to me, it feels like the rest would be just so, everybody would be so condensed together. In that. So, Stefan, if they went you, further west, I see that. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's exactly what I was going to say. If you could go back to the, uh, the yeah. oh, so you cut into the back. Side. Okay, yeah. So we actually went past that access road that, that goes off kind of mm -hmm. to the west and south. Um, so now we go back to option C. So we we expanded that. Um, we kept that connection for the city to be able to come in when the city, you know, maybe and say, yeah, could still use the camp loop. And connect, I would think, you know, kind of your standard forest service gate, you know, to kind of keep the campers out of there. Uh, but, you know, still providing that access. Go ahead. Are the, is the distance between campsites the same in all the proposals? Generally it is, yes. Which are, given that we don't have a whole lot of room, we went with about 20 feet of space of, of buffer space, which we would propose to plan that um, to, to help create that separation. What are those other two large uh, green areas down below here? On the yeah, let, let me uh, let me get back into this. Let me explain <laughs> this one first. All right, so um, upon entry, Keynote F would be the host site off to the right. Again, that's a full through site um, maintaining the, the, the city kind of maintenance access around the back with the gravel. Um, immediately off to the left, there would be two standard tent sites. Instead of stacked parking, that would be side-by-side -side parking um, with double. So that, you know, it's a potential upcharge for the city. You can charge more for an additional parking. Um, the yellow sites, yeah, you are stuck in those are uh, two ADA sites. Again, those are located near the restroom, which is keynote D, um, and the restroom is located fairly adjacent to the lift station. With so many sites on this one, we wanted to locate the restroom more to the center, the core of the campground, so that's that's uh, why the, the restroom is located where it is. Uh, the kind of the starting around the loop, the green, uh, Sites are uh, more standard tent sites, all of those are single car. And then to your question, the larger kind of green zones, those are group campsites. I was thinking that's what they might be. <laughs> so those could facilitate, facilitate up to about 20 people. Each one of those has six parking spaces. So thinking about you know youth groups, um, uh, you know, larger families that, that want to have multi-generational camping, that sort of thing. So each one of those has three picnic tables and a larger fire and, and a lot of room for, for tents for up to 20 people. Um, working around the, the rest, there's uh, six more standard tent sites. And then as you get further along, there's six RV sites <coughs> in this option. So this one kind of has it all. Um, with the exception of the yurts, but uh, 
It includes ADA sites, standard tent sites, group sites, and RV sites. Just one restroom or two? It would be it would be one building, but in this concept, we would definitely want to go to. Uh, well, I would I would actually suggest four. Yep. Uh, four or toilets, whether that's for individual, and we're gonna we're gonna look at some options for that. But I would I would say at least four for this option. Um, will they have showers? That's a good question, and I'd like for you guys to answer that. <laughs> John, so yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna look at that. Yeah. I think William. That's a great question. This this option does not, and um, again looks at looks at more of a buffer. Uh, actually, I'll correct myself. It does have a very small connection from the general parking, not from the, the campground area. So if you were a camper, you'd really kind of have to go out all the way to the entrance along the general parking, which is Keynote H. There, there you go right there. And then there's your connection up to the trail. So um, the bike station is like literally right about where your hand mark is, your handprint. So it's not too far of an access point for bikers. Mm -hmm. So John, the paved path is a counterclockwise one way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Did you see none of these? Is there, there any consideration of things <laughs> camping on top of the old burner site? No. I. You know. That's going to be a battle every time. A battle? People <laughs> probably want to, right? You almost have to a couple of years up there. But they were years. Like the accessibility issue because it's like a dangerous, like, <laughs> Yeah. I was thinking you almost have to put a fence around it to like keep people out so it's like not a insurance issue with somebody. Yeah, it's something we didn't really want to get into just <laughs> honestly the liability of that um, we don't know enough about that structure you know it to me it does not look like a very flat uh, place even to camp up on top there's a few areas sure but you know there's there's some holes in there as well uh, and I have churches in it. yeah yeah so we didn't we didn't look at that we our idea was to kind of clean it up around, around the perimeter, but let it be let it be in place. And again, kind of thinking about the signage, I think it'd be really cool to put some historical signs, you know, to to show what it was, what this place was uh, back in the day, um, but not really using it. So, so Let's let's jump through just some quick character images, and then we'll get into some questions. So um, I think you all probably got a pretty good idea of what standard tent sites are: parking, picnic table, fire ring, place for a tent or two. ADA compliant tent sites have ADA handicap parking. Um, they would have. A concrete pad for a picnic table. The picnic table itself would be ADA compliant. A fire ring and then um, a tent site as well. Let's jump to the next. <coughs> RV sites. I think you're all probably pretty familiar with Anderson Park. Probably don't need me to tell you about that. But we could make um, some of the RV ADA compliant as well. It's not. Too much more difficult to do that, just a little extra paving, something we, we can consider. Would, would teardrops or would things that trailers that don't require that that are not that are full on full behind trailers that don't require electricity or whatever, would those be uh, camping sites or would they be RV sites? I think it would kind of depend on um, communicating. To the public when they're booking, allowing them to decide what they're capable of, of getting their their uh, unit into. Um, I mean, we, some of the state parks I've seen, you know, said uh, trailers up to 20 feet can be used tent sites as long as they don't like this. Right, right, and and a lot of our tent sites have 40 foot deep. 
uh, parking. So if somebody wanted to bring, you know, a guy or a, a you know, pickup camper, uh, that sort of thing, they could easily get into this insight. So the images along the bottom are the uh, the idea for the group. Um, again, those would be large groups for up to 20 people, larger fire ring in the middle, um, and lots of lots of space for tents around those. Yours, um, these are again year-round. Could be heated, not. They could be accessible or not depending on if, if we wanted to build some ramps um, and depending on what level they're built at, they can build, they can be built fairly low profile. Um, you know, essentially just build a, a wood deck and, and they get connected to the deck. So uh, we could make some of them, one or, one or two of them, ADA compliant. Um, but these would have, they would be fitted out with essentially just, you know, some cots, um, a cot or two, or bunk bed cots, those sorts of things, and a small table, a uh, picnic table on the outside, and a fire ring. And then at the day use area, um, we thought, uh, you know, a, a multi uh, picnic table structure, something kind of along the lines of the, the two images on the left. We could go with something a little bit more architectural um, if we wanted to. I don't know how open uh, the state is to funding those sorts of things, but um, we could certainly put that in our budget and shoot for that. All right, now to the rest of the Can you say anything about the security of the yards and um, how vulnerable they are to vandalism in other areas? It's, that's a good question that I, I probably am not the best person to answer. We, we do deal, you know, some with kind of understanding how the maintenance works with some of our clients, state parks, those sorts of things. Um, they need eyes on them, I would say. They definitely need eyes on them. Uh, I would say if you go with yours, you're going to want a year-round camp post, for sure. Um, and probably, uh, you know, a light, just a, an overhead uh, floodlight, you know, street light sort of thing. Um, that helps to deter a lot of vandalism as well. But yeah, I, I would absolutely say that if, if you go with yours, you're essentially um, proposing a year-round campground, so you should have a year-round campground. Okay, now talking about the restroom. So um, the uh, the top image would be um, basically two unisex restrooms. So um, these would be individual lockable door. You go in, you're, you have a private restroom with a toilet, a and a sink. Um, flushable restroom, wash sink. Um, again, private. What this does is it, it doesn't let a line, or it would actually have a line stack up if if they were both being used. Um, it also would prevent someone who, you know, just wants to go in and wash their hands if they're both being used, um, would prevent that. What uh, the, the bottom option shows is basically what's there now, um, not, in the, not in the architecture, but in the, floor, in the floor plan. What's out there now is a double toilet and a sink, so the door's not lockable. You, you go and you have full access, if you just needed to wash your hands, you could get in and do that without having to use the toilets. Um, so those you are have a situation where you had the unisex and then you had uh, sinks outside. That could that could work. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, we would want sinks inside still, but um, they could have them outside as well. I think that would not tie up the restrooms. Mm -hmm. All right, so this one uh, shows restrooms with the potential for showers. Uh, the top option uh, has basically, it's hard to read at this size, but the doors leading to the, to the right, the right side of these units are the restroom facility. The 
backside would be a shower facility. So what that does is it opens it opens you up to the option of people, you know, maybe renting an RV site for a week or two um, and having access to a shower. I think you would want shower portion to have specific access, meaning what that person gets from the camp post or when they book, they get a key code if they want to pay for the shower. Um, I think it's an upcharge opportunity for the city. Um, it would be additional maintenance. It's, it's a more expensive building, but it could be a nice feature uh, for the city to have, to have showers. Um, the option on, on the bottom, uh, this has four units, four restroom units, and every single unit has a, has a shower. Um, this is kind of the, uh, you know, the Cadillac version. <laughs> um, and it might be a little bit of overkill uh, for your needs, but those are available if you wanted to consider something like that. <laughs> so with that, um, that finishes our presentation portion. Let's maybe uh, step and go back to some of the concepts uh, and open it up for questions. I would, uh, um, I was in Canada recently and they had, I ran into a situation I haven't seen before where they had a bunch of doors, they were unisex doors for bathrooms, right? so you had a hallway, and then you had sinks out in, in, the, in the hallway itself, so the people could go in and out and it didn't, it was, it, it was based on you know, it was a unisex situation, but still had that. I can envision something where you might have sinks in the middle, uh, a set of, of stalls on one side, and some showers on the other side. Have you seen anything like that? Or, um, I mean, it just seems like it would give us a lot of versatility. I'm thinking about those group sites with 20 people, and you know, looking at you know, your 20 people each, and with the other stuff. Like, Potentially, could have well over 100 people in the campsite, right? Mm -hmm. In the big one. Um, and I'm assuming and most of those are not RVs, so people are going to be using the, the restroom. So, I'm right. wondering, do you have, have you thought of something like that? I have. I've seen a lot of different configurations, and frankly, whatever we we could come up with is buildable. Uh, these prefabricated units are so customizable. Um, and they, they do have the option to put the sinks on the outside. I think it would just be a matter of, you know, coming up with what we want in terms of usability. Do we want showers? Do we want them integrated into the restrooms or not? And then configuring that, that layout, uh, you know, as part of, as part of the prefabricated. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I'm just gonna go ahead, Teresa. It's not really a question. Um, I'm just wondering, do you feel like any of the designs could accommodate both RV and some yards, even if it was last year or obviously less tent sites? Would that be an option? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, really kind of at this stage, anything goes. So, yeah, and I see what you're saying, though, Teresa, because if you took that area to the right of center, where the, where the uh, burner is to the right, and you have those <coughs> campsites right there, those tent sites, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can put a handful of yards there. You can put a handful of yards there, still have this concept. And you, both of and you still have the RV, the ADA tent sites down below, and you have the yards and still have RV and yards available year round. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so you can almost kill two birds with one stone. I like what you're saying there, but. Yeah, but I don't know how many tents it would really. Oh, I don't know that right. we know that. And we still have um, the other side of the lake. We're taking we everything that's still happening. Yeah. So. Tight. And I think, yeah, I mean, I definitely hear the maintenance concern in here. It's like, right. I would be, I'm, if I'm going to camp in a tent, I don't want anyone near me. And so, like, I, I know there's a market for tent sites like this. I'm not it. Um, <clears throat> but I love a year. Like, I would. I'll literally search for camp, like state park campgrounds just to see which ones have yurts, even if it's not a state park. I necessarily have any 
like desire or radar to go to because <laughs> It has to and 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 have to listen to people. And if you did the so, yurts up there, they'd be in a more secure area where they'd be closer to the camp post mm -hmm. and they'd be closer to the main parking lot area. So there'd be more lighting, more more foot traffic. And so if you took those 10 sites out and put the yurts there, it probably would be like the perfect spot for them. Because I'm, I'm personally leaning way toward this design but with the adjustments to that area because it still has the path to access down below here to. Get away from the parking lot and still have second the trail. Mm -hmm. Still close to the bike repair station. <laughs> features plus to your side. And I like that idea. That's good shit. I don't think that the trail access to the trail is that big a deal, given how you're going to pedal uh, a couple of less than a block to get to get back to the campsite. It was a, the, so I mean, to me, that, that I don't see that as a how much did the trail access way on the grant that we? Uh, well, wait, there it's right off the trail. This is this is this is this fits with with that. Right. So, but the, the other things that we mentioned in the application was uh, a restroom, a handicapped restroom with showers, right? And that was at that point we were suggesting that it be close to the dock so that people from the handicapped dock could also access the handicapped restroom. Um, so that was one of the, the things that we were looking at, uh, but the but we know that yurts are something important for the county. We know that that there's an increased need for RV campsites because of the stuff happening in Westport, right? I mean, I mean, it's generally that's a big big thing too, and that I think the fact that we have some tent sites is going to be something that's going to be appealing to bicyclists and, right. and others that are going to be using it. So, and so the bicyclists that I've spoken to at the lake, they, when we were talking, to them, I, go, I talk to everybody, so I'm like, you know, they're like, hey, we're going to be going out over here at Camp Ground, blah, blah, blah. When I bring that up to them, the one thing that they talk about is having a secondary access to the trail because they don't want to, if they're camped down these bottom spots, right, they don't want to have to go across the campground and around to get back out to the trail. So they said that was one thing that came up in the conversation it's was the second bar. No, it's not. Yeah, I'm still probably add that trail access to that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Even if it eats one tent site. Right. It's and so together. it's like having that secondary access point to come up a lot to where it can just get out through the trail. So. Yep. so one thing I'm thinking about, because this is kind of a low area, and I'm not super familiar with like the site hydrology, but is there any like plant, like how do you all like figure out like where? You know, drainage is or like where water is going to settle. Um, you know, I'm thinking about F, where that big gravel parking area is now. You have in the existing photo, it's just like a, a muddy, you know, swamp, which is, it, you know, but is there, I guess, is there, and this might, this is going to be part of the later design, I imagine, but like, do you, do you incorporate areas for like stormwater catchment or like, you know, just where water can drain to, like specific spots of the campground that you know you kind of think of in this gonna in this early phase while you're drawing stuff, or it's like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, it's absolutely a part of it. Um, whatever we do, we definitely don't want to build a campground that's going to be underwater. Sure. Right. So um, there are some areas worked in, uh, primarily kind of along edge of paving. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, camp post, there's a buffer there um, where the where the split off uh, from the main circle comes. There's a buffer in there. Um, really, what we would want to do is get water out and away as fast as possible uh, and catch that and, and move it so that it's not, you know, inundating the, yeah. the okay. campground for sure. Yeah. I want to chime in a little bit too. Yeah. I don't think it affects this one too much. But I don't know. I should see let's go that uh, the first campsite on the right when you're going past the sewer lift station. Mm -hmm. right there. That <laughs> is right where stormwater comes out from Highway 47, oh. Lakeview. There's a lot of water that comes out right in there. And I don't I guess we figure it out. I just don't know where I would go off the top of my head. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's something we're going to need to look at for sure because I wasn't aware of that. Um, the drain okay. Well, it's vegetative covered, but it's like rows of stone that basically acts like a slowing for a drain. Um, 
But the reason I don't like going into that is if you go back to concept A, the access road that you have going off to the left is really California Avenue, which all the way to, where am I? All the way to here, it's a platted road. Okay. It's only not a platted road in this section where it meets back up. So I like this, that this could, this version could leave the city dedicating that access road to a width and connecting it so that it so actually, like yeah, so that this, because this is California Avenue, it could actually connect all the way. And in our transportation plan, that is a secondary road set if we had to, if some sort of slumping happens on the hill up above. Okay. So I like A or staying southeast of that mm -hmm. so that that doesn't get um, affected. The other thing is if you took, I'm going to nerd out here. One of the things about Kim saying about the ADA, if you took this and swapped it here, mm -hmm. so then the, the ADA restroom could be by the ADA dock, you could do a trail out of it pretty short. We're not so worried about water and sewer because Chris works for Public Works and we've talked about it. They would be the ones putting that in. Water's probably coming off Lakeview Drive, so the road north of that sewer station, right. that's where water is going to come. Sewer comes right along, and they wouldn't hate us if we had to put in a manhole for it, because they would like a manhole <laughs> on that straight line that basically follows the road of A to that sewer pump station. Mm -hmm. So there is a sewer line, new sewer line that comes there and they wouldn't be opposed to putting in a manhole and then just pouring into the side of it to get it in line with that whole system. Okay. Then you wouldn't have to go to the wet well with it. You could go to the manhole, which goes to the wet well, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I, I really love the idea of the earth, but I am really concerned in this community with the vandalism. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it is, I mean, it's almost a movie at Target. And I, I am worried with this particular site more than I would be, say, at Anderson. If there was a way to put yurts at Anderson and not here, I think that it would be, it would be less vulnerable person. But if your camp host is G, and right, the first two right below your camp host were yurts, we're assuming the camp host is the same park host as the park. No. The, the camp host, in well, we've t internally discussed it, but we're thinking to clean it up, you would take the camp host away from the vendors. You would just place the lake camp host in the campground. Mm -hmm. If you were going to camp over at the primitive, they would come check in with that person at the campground. So, and then we wouldn't have a camp post on the side by Calypso. So the camp post would be tucked away in the campground and let's, let's have less view of what was going on at the lake. Yeah. No, they'd, be right there. they'd be at G. Right there in front. I, I, yeah, oh. I get that. Yeah, they're not really, they don't really have duties of managing the lake as, as a park. They're really there as to be kind of an assistant to campus and for restroom cleaning. Okay. Yeah. I think we had concern about like six or eight of them because the logistics of managing that is like extreme. If we had two yeah. or three yurts, that seems more manageable. It might not be the same park host we have. She may not be interested in the work that it takes for that if that's not where she's at in her life. But yeah. We could see somebody managing three and some regular sites pretty easily, and we'd probably do it similar to how we run on on Rover Pass. So it would be mostly online reservation. I, I am also trying to figure out. I mean, we've got 18 sites in this this one. Yes. Yeah. So 26 with the Marshall Plan. I'm also not able to calculate this, but I'm sure that, you know, you're looking at, obviously it's going to be a more expensive campground because you're going to have a larger restroom facility and stuff. But if we're looking at revenue coming in from this, 
Um, do we have a sense as to what the, the cost benefit is for the different models or <laughs> well, I think you're, the ones with a yurt or an RV, you're going to have, we don't hardly get primitive camping. And that's a huge area. You could have that whole meadow over there when it's mowed but to yourself, and we hardly ever get the tent camping. Um, just because there's, like Cherie said, there's people that want to be in the woods when you're tent camping, not next to gym or And whatever. it's not accessible. Yeah. You just pack all your stuff across the lake. Yeah. Well, that's true. Mm -hmm. That would be true. That's true with the primitive. Right. That wouldn't be true with this. No, but I still don't see a ton of tents, especially if they have to be in the buffer zone. I think that's going to be a deterrent. Yeah. I also see that they see this campground here. They see that there's spots that brings new people in and they go, wait. On the other side of the lake, there, there's some more camping away from it. Right. I actually, help think it sells more spots in that primitive once more people discover it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and really, an RV site can be used for a camp for a tent. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so it's nice to have dual purpose, which like some of the tent sites really could just be dry RV sites. There's yeah. some people I ran into that didn't even know there was camping on the other side of the lake. So. Yeah. So oh, I, I just like the idea of RV sites functioning as sort of an innate buffer along the what is the southeast southeast yeah, yeah. that southeast mm -hmm. sort of like quadrant maybe southwest or i think there's a little turn around southwest no where are they oh no <laughs> let me come over here <laughs> <What's this? laughs> i just like the idea of the rv sites kind of oh, yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. forming a buffer oh. now going and like between the lake stuff you know, stuff going out here. If there's any sort of more primitive camping or Sharice yeah. camping, it's going to be over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 when I say it, to me, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. And then to me, it makes sense to keep the tents more in a secluded zone, whether yeah. it's expanded or not. And then I really like if there's a yurt option to have it over as close to the, to, you know, the campo, sorry, as possible. But, right. So, in the first option, how easy would it just be to take so one, two, three, four, those six RV sites and put them with those six tent sites? Yeah. Be very That'd be very simple, right? Well, it'd be simple, but you're going to have to change the arc because they're going to have to back in. Yeah, I mean, but it's, it's all yeah. it's all, it's all play. Yeah. yeah. But these are yeah, draft concepts. Yeah. So yeah. If I draw, they draft. I take what I'm hearing in the room from Cherise and from them as well. So I kind of see this model, right? Yeah. And then I see taking the six RV sites there, put top of them with those, those six right there, flipping them with those six ten sites, having the access, having the secondary access, mm -hmm. and then still using the area up top for the yurts, two or three of them up by the camp post up there. You can almost incorporate what each person is saying just by simply turning it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Well, yeah, those four right below G could be four years. Right, yeah. And your you village. It, your village, there you go. And yeah. then you put the six RVs down there just left of the path. You see what I'm saying? Where yeah. that secondary path you put, boom. And the tents move over there. And then the move over there, and it'd be a simple shift. Yeah. And, well, and I think you could spread it out if you move yeah. the bathroom to that corner. Yeah, more central, like you're saying. Yeah, if you move the bathroom to the Correct. southeast yeah. corner yeah. right yeah. there. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Of course, the RV. Yeah, well, 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 when he's casing the trunk, I own tax on 700, which is that dotted way south. Mm -hmm. That's my husband, John. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a couple, first of all, generally, love the idea and congratulations on what you did this far. We've thought about this for years, but never made it sound like this. See what Chris great. brought, honey? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> great activity, great activity in the city. Had a couple of questions. One, um, that southern property line that 
it kind of cuts through a couple of them more of these songs. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> uh, would sure appreciate some sort of fencing in there. So I don't have all that traffic okay. stepping across the fence on my property. That makes sense. Right. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is I'm interested where, so what I call California Avenue is your access road. And that was one of the ways that I was going to get access to my transportation. It shows it going all the way through. So, but my question is less about that right now, more about where where your access road disappears off this map. What thoughts are you putting into? Because that's going to go right through a bunch of parking that when we get fish delivery, that parking lot is that's the main. That's why a lot of overflow. F, F is still remain. F the letter up there. Yeah. Still remains this parking here that's gravel. Okay. Which is why I was talking about this model being more favorable to access to the lake through the parking because the older group that comes down there, like they go to the backside, and that ADA dock is over there, and so instead of parking up by the camp post, it's a shorter walk if you go park over there. So instead, we go down there and park and then walk to the slot closer. And if you, if we ultimately pull this off and get F paved, we could have ADA parking spots, the closest they get can get to the trail there, yeah. this side, right? And then the rest of it could be standard parking. So get back to what I was saying. So it goes through the parking lot there, and then you're gonna connect the Highway 47 for a bunch of uh, trucks pulling trailers. I would really suggest that as part of this because I'm guessing you're going to have to rework that. And so that should be part of this whole package to the state because it's a pretty sharp turn. It's a pretty sharp turn. Yeah. Ahead. When you when you start thinking about that happening right there, somebody with some brains needs to figure that out because I don't think the current little island we got. I just don't think there's enough room. So that that in my opinion, that should be part of your map because that's a pretty big deal. Okay. Yeah, we'll look at that. Like I said, at the very beginning, we do have civil engineers that we're co-workers with. We can run all of the traffic, you know, on turns and make sure all that is going to function. Um, I know that it can, it can stack up, you know, on Sunday evening and Sunday afternoon and for at the same time. So, yeah, I did, I did want to mention, you know, on all the concepts, it is a little tight between the wigwam and that property line. We didn't cave over that property line, but we do have some um, camping zones that could extend <laughs> over. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 where you might put your picnic table, but you know, if if we did want to fence that, we could we could move those those uh, picnic and firing areas. I'm not really so, so sure how accurate that sudden is. It may be, it may be fine. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Is that pretty accurate? It's accurate. It's so so six inches. I work in land use, and we would require that to be. I'm going to speak up because Jen's a owner and she works here. Um, you would have to keep it five feet off that property line. Any so, paving? Like any, any use, any period. Use. You don't get to use it. So those ones would just have to be shortened. But those are the ones we're talking about moving anyway. Yeah, yeah, make them shorty tent size. Yeah, yeah. And if, if they put a second tent or have a second vehicle, they can park it at the wall. And just walk in My, my, uh, I'm wondering if there is a way, and right now you're still talking about one stall, right? No. no. We, would, we would need to do two minutes for sure. Um, whether or not they're unisex or men's women's, uh, I would say two minimum. Uh, preferably, you really want four oh. toilets. Yeah. Yeah. Even even that with even with the uh, the eighteen. Well, and I bet there's a kit that has similar to Anderson, where it has. Three stalls, two sinks, and a shower, shower and a room. female side, a maintenance hall, and a male side. Yeah. Right. And then I think ours at Anderson has on the end it has a handicap shower. So it's wider, it's one big room, everything can get wet. But 
we could do some look more to the akin to match Anderson with the and then amenities. I, I really like the idea of the unisex, uh, especially in this day and age. And if you and I think it's I, I it just ran so much faster in terms of how many people use the bathroom and when their sinks were outside of the uh, the, the tricky floor. thing about that, Kim, is we're gonna have to they're gonna have to be expensive because if they're outside they're prone to freezing. You're gonna have to get you not you don't even have to be outside of the building. Building, but what you that. saw, I think, was a custom. And what we can afford is a kit. We have to work within, like, whether it's, I don't even, the, all of our bathrooms here are kits. They're already, like, designed by someone for your snow load, everything, and then you just pick the configuration, whether it's three stalls, two stalls. So I think something like that is going to be a specialty, not a kit. And kits, what... Kids still a hundred grand and up. Yeah. I mean, they're still a pretty penny. Uh, I just think if, if at least they can look for that <laughs> idea of the various stalls, if men or women or whoever can go in, use the restroom, come out to the, the, the sinks which were, are in the building itself, and then have showers that are also unisex, it's going to give, for one thing, for for those of us women in particular that stand in line for ages and ages and ages on it gives it gives people it's, it just was so much more efficient and yeah. you didn't have to have as many stalls you know yeah you could go three stalls instead of four right because you it's whoever needed to go right yeah i think to add on to that i just i think it'd be nice to have and it's going to be something that's winter needs to be winterized but to have like a uh, spring summer fall like outdoor faucet or uh you know a the yard hydrant the so the yeah. tricky the thing is is it's going to be if we do them outside they're going to be fish cleaning um, yeah. because we but we have it at anderson and we fight people cleaning their fish in that kitchen sink all the time okay well so that's why I'm like, I'm trying to think of like the problems. I'm not trying to be negative, Nelly, but I'm trying to think of like all the things we've experienced already and not setting it up. Washing to the outside. I was suggesting that to the outside of the stalls. But why the right, but what I'm saying is that's a, a luxury. We can't, we probably can't afford. Because it's not, he's not going to know if it's a kid. I'm pretty yeah. sure I've never seen one of the kits and I've looked into a ton of them. I've never seen a kit with like, because you think about it, every stall is about a thousand to two thousand dollars just in the hardware for the stall. So if you, or if it's a door, it's even more expensive if you're enclosing each one into an actual room. So that's why I've never, I don't, I've never seen it where there's all of that because I think it's a custom thing. I think it's, and maybe there's a company that makes the custom ones, but I think it's gonna be super expensive. They just, yeah. Well, and typically if you need to wash your hands and the bathrooms are full, you go to the yard, yard hydrant that's there yep. and wash your hands in campgrounds. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, from yeah. experience. The outdoor faucet, yeah. Yeah, no, it's a yard hydrant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The pump thing, the pump, like yeah. spigot. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the bathroom kit involves our decision tonight. No, okay. no I just, I want to be honest with that. I think we're not going to find something that isn't costing a ton more money for like specific mm -hmm. amenities. That's all I want to say. Okay. We can price out anything. We can but. certainly explore it. Yeah. Um, the two are that we always work with are CXT, less custom, and Romtech. Romtech. A little bit more custom. Yeah, Romtech's what the two are, or the three are. They're all Romtech. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry. I like this concept, except the bathroom, and if you could push the road over for the RV so they wouldn't have to zigzag through there. Just hook it at the bottom of the circle. Yeah. Yeah. So don't. So the bathrooms could go to the other side of the road by the where they're trying to put yurts, which is kind of starting to fall together. Yeah. But put the road over so the RVs don't have to make a right hand turn there. So like where, uh -oh. where your where your arrow is there, John. 
the yeah. second arrow below the wigwam, yeah. the one to like at four o'clock, mm -hmm. if that's where the road just did a gradual swoop and didn't go up and didn't over. Up. Yeah. Okay. And I would think two showers and four stalls to go to the bathroom. <laughs> So you have showers yeah. and yeah. and they're working and, and you're happy with oh, yeah. being maintained and all that? Yeah, we just did a like a remodel and overhaul of them. And then we use tokens now. We don't use quarters. Okay. So we don't have nearly the theft problem of people breaking into the, because we do tokens. Okay. okay, sounds good. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it sounds like a variation of this one. Seems like. And you know what, for me, to be, to be honest, I think the, the third option is way bigger. Like I said, when you guys first put it up, it's just way bigger than the original thought was because we're thinking if it got so big, there's a lot of houses right around the ridge, and that's going to create loud, and that's going to create noise and stuff like that that's for the neighbors. Right. And so keeping it on a smaller scale was kind of the original idea when we were walking this, just kind of have another campground, but not like blow up the neighbors kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why I'm having the first one. Plus we can adjust those features easily on that first one. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, adjusting the neighbors in there, like Sheree said, moving flip flop in those tent sites with the RV sites, easy, easy, like you said, simple adjustments to this model. And then, uh, I'm sorry, what was your name? Oh, gotcha. And then like Helen said, that, that turning area, just revising that turning area down there. Yep. Those are little, little adjustments, but this to me seems like a nice little intimate campground that's Shaded from the lake, and you know, with all the tent sides being on the back side, get that rosy feeling. So, mm -hmm. so sorry that didn't mean to cut you. I had a thought. The handicap spots are shorter, right? They're shorty. They're, They're thirty. A single parking spot. So those could go on that property line. They'd be near the restroom, near the trail access to get to the ADA dock. So you kind of could have the ADA bottom corner that's mm -hmm. dealing with the shortness needed, dealing with a restroom accessibility, yeah, you know what I mean? And then RVs above it or something. Yeah, yeah, right. Just move the lake long burn all the time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been down to Farview and they've got cabins, and I think the cabins would be better than yours with the amount of rain to get there. They're going to cost a little bit more, but I think they're going to be more durable. And is it like a kit cabin type? Actually, they had trailers <laughs> wheels axles underneath them. They pulled them in there and put steps oh. up to them. And Don't they have yurts? Yeah. That, 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 that was the old idea. They have yurts in Fort Stevens. Yeah, they've got they yurts on the Olympics. They have yurts in the whole of them. Yeah, because they're on the beach. I was going to mention Fort Stevens too. Whatever is most cost effective. I'm talking about vandalism. I'm about somebody slashing them with a knife or something. Yeah. It will be vandalized a lot. Well, and I think you could solve that by just building in. I mean, you're not going to stop them from doing it, but you could catch them. Just building in with a light at the Paracos with some cameras. Yeah, absolutely. They just show the access as people are coming to it, so you see them coming at it. Right. You'll know who's camping there. They're not vandalizing. It's the people that would be coming from a distance. Right. That would it's be. The same thing you guys been doing with the parks. With the so, like a road yeah. camera where it shows you as people come in or out. Accountability stops people. Yeah. <laughs> when you just see them, you only do it once. Is the cost for a cabin much more? Yeah, I would say three to five times as much. Oh, really? Yeah. I could believe that's because these are, yeah, yeah you're cheap, material, cheaper material and less building structure. Yeah, I think you can get a 16 foot diameter yurt, not in, installed, but, um, you know, direct from, you know, the company, all, all pieces for about $10,000. Um, You'd have to build the platform, put it on, and get someone to install it. But, you know, cabins are going to be the US quite, quite a bit more than like that. Too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want one, two, three. <laughs> well, I think it. Yeah, and I kind of like the rate option because I know parking is a big deal down there. It is. The crowd go in and 
What <laughs> it has a second guy who moves out that lake. Once well, those blackberries come in. Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, preserving them there, you know, making making it so then they would park two ways in there. Um, but if we do pull the camp post out over here, there's always a potential of graveling out the other way. Yeah. Where she is and put some parking in there. Too. Yeah, it wouldn't be good for trailers, but it'd be good for passenger cars. Yeah, yeah just like little cars with trucks and stuff. Well, the, the fire department. Well, the trailer, they, they got have somewhere to park. You could live some parking. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it might be a good time to vote. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we're there. Okay. All right. Uh, so do we need to make like an option D for A with all the changes? <laughs> yeah. So if, if we vote A, then we can then we have a right. model, then we can discuss the changes to that model after voting on it. That's correct. Yeah. And okay. that one. So, so what we'd like to do is is pick an approach mm -hmm. and then everybody let's set back down for another, you know, little bit and hash through what what do we want to add, what's missing, what do we want to pull out. You know, and then we'll talk about other details, you know, like dumpster enclosures and all that stuff um, that we're going to move in later. So for the voting exercise, Stefan's going to um, clip some voting sheets to each one or a voting sheet to each one. Um, and we've got, basically, we've got everybody gets three stickers. So come up and get your sticker sleeve. Um, you're supposed to put your two dots on your first pick. Yeah. Two dots on your first pick, one dot on your second pick. Well, if we let you put two dots on the floor for me, you can't put three on one, you can't put one on three. Look at this, this is fourth grade. Does this paper turn the I voted seven times. No, you failed. Okay. Wait, where are we at? Oh, there's a. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Wildly popular. Is that the A? A that's A there, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> Looks like we're not going big. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need to step I think you're waiting. Do it? She said Friday, and I'm here until 1230. Um, so sometime in the morning, we're thinking, whatever works for me. I'm taking off the option of saying, little guy, now for Christmas, he won. He thinks space that's a little guy. And for Christmas, he got the blazer. It's mom and dad. So we're going to the blazer game at 5 o'clock. Wow. So excited. He tells me he's going to be in the NBA. And my answer every time he says that is, I believe you will be. And then he says, and I'm going to fly you to all my games when you're a little old lady. And I go, okay, then. <laughs> that one's real popular, isn't it? <laughs> what? I said, I asked Jana if she just gave it one because she felt bad for it. 
one. I know. That's huge. It is. And, but we can manage it. I mean, we can bear no. Anderson, we have really good people there right now, but that's 20 RVs and 20 tents. That's from 40 sites that we have. Do you have camp posts, or is that lady going to do that? It depends on if she wants the tent. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You'd have to be willing to do everything we need to have done for that site. And I don't know that she's up for it. She used to do a lot of uh, fire watch. So she's kind of used to a little more relaxing. Even even in the summer, the tents, the tent even gets old. Yeah. It's a lot. I'm impressed with all the good suggestions. Yeah. yeah, I like the road uh, kind of connecting it because then you have a snow exit. Yeah, you know? I like the uh, little exit. I think everyone's like, yes, you're it's getting closer to ground. I, I like it. Yeah, like if you put it yeah. right there, yeah, we had it so right some RV sites because that's what we were really going for with an addition of a couple campsites. If you wanted to do yours or something like that. I think it's a visibility. I think you'd have those in RV sites. Did you check out your map last night? I did. <laughs> it's it's well, kind of fun, right? That one looks like a tree in there. It does. Uh, so you can see it.
Thank you all for voting. <laughs> yeah, they felt bad. Nice work, Jim and Kim have gone there because they felt bad. Like a clear winner, and uh, I think everyone's probably in, in consensus on option A with the revisions, moving moving the RV over to kind of the southeast area, adding yurts to this concept. We're thinking three. three. Three yurts, okay. And then moving the restaurant. Moving, right, moving the restroom. And then relocating the ADA compliant tent sites over next to the restroom. Yeah. Basically pulling that with the restroom. Yeah. Moving the tent sites to the west. Yeah. And realigning the drive. Right. Yeah. I, I like the drive option yeah. number two. The, the alignment? Yeah, the yeah. alignment of number two it's is nice. because a lot, most people with drive yeah. don't know how to drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was looking at you, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't want to lose any more of the long RV sites. Right. So six is a good number? Right. Yeah. Well, and that's why I'm kind of wondering what's our business, but I'm sure there's going to be demand for those. Yeah. I, I think our goal going into it was to have an RV site and let's throw some tents in the boot. Right. Yeah. Right. But there was a reason we went for tents because, again, there, we wrote some of this because of it worked with the grant. Right. right. Yeah. And they, they, they did not just want RV. They wanted some tents and they wanted and Again, Tony County one, it's in Europe, so this this combination makes sense. Mm -hmm. But don't get rid of the tents altogether. I don't know. Just push a little bit more RV if you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you might end up with a little bit. Well, but but again, if if well, but campers uh, like full on campers could use the tent size, that yeah, one, that's still you know it's going to be practical. Yeah, because you there's lots of people that wish they didn't have to hook up. Right, like right. so, those would act like dry. They'd be cheap, a little bit cheaper for not having the hookups, and you could pull something and have it. I mean, we have people that do RV spots for a tent because they want to set their tent on the compacted surface. Yeah, one thing we could do: all of our tent sites have 90 degree parking. We could look at angling some of those as back here. Ten sites, just like an RV site, they get smaller. So you know, it's a smaller. Maybe it's a trailer pop up, or you know, somebody with a uh, on cab or a on truck camper, those sorts of things. Sure, okay. and easier to back in, angled, but we can still call it a tent. Just like you. Okay. Um, and I think we're pretty clear on the restroom. We do want a shower. We want multiple stalls, not not uh, just two, but four would be best. I've heard that basically what you have at Anderson Park works pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could look at that model. I do think that a unisex <laughs> is, is something. A unisex, yeah. I, you know, what we can do is price them both out. Mm -hmm. And I guess we, we need to work this out in how we apply for the grant. Yeah. But um, the restroom, the way it's going to work in the, in the site plan and the campground layout, we can kind of just pick and place whatever type of restroom we go with. Yeah. So I would say we propose to go with the more expensive option in the grant. And if we don't get the money, we go with. Less expensive option. So, are we going to try for this grant that's coming up in, in April first? Yep, okay. we're gonna we're gonna probably end up sending 75, 80 percent concept drawings, which that doesn't pr prohibit you from applying. They, I mean, it's gonna be fully almost finalized, right? But does it come? Is it due April first? Yep. I've been working. I've been working on parts of it. Okay. And then John's working on his part. Okay. We need additional help yeah. The next two weeks. It's not gone. Okay. So that is a good segue. So our looking ahead at our uh, schedule, 
we're going to be putting together the uh, kind of the preliminary construction documents, if, if, if you were calling that. Um, 60% is, is what they are. Um, we're going to look at materials, the layout, uh, dialing in the layout, um, all the site furnishings. We're going to look at uh, city preferred pavement tables, fire rings, all of that. Um, one thing we haven't really talked about too much is paving. We showed these as all asphalt paving. I would recommend if these are going to be year round that, that we go with that. I agree, otherwise, the other times we come to this. Yep, I 100% agree. Yep, absolutely. Um, so we're going to be putting all of that in um, and targeting a basically end of March deliverable with a cost estimate for that plan or just set it to apply for the grant. Are we going to go for electricity for at least the VRD sites? Yeah, well, they'd be hookups. Okay, so the electric. Full hookups? They'll have water and electric. You can buy the yurts too, but have electric. No, no, I would think that Well, I guess it depends on what putting in electric, I mean, the simplicity of like a simple line in for like a light and yeah, a plug in. Just the light. Okay, yeah. Will they have sewer hookups? No. Okay, so just limited hookups Who? for RVs. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's not required. I go to places that have none. Yeah, the only tricky part is if you're staying there for any number of days and you're not using our shower. Um, that'd be a Chris and Jeff question on how hard that would be. If they go down to yeah, yeah. they could, but they'd have to pull, undo their jacks. Do you know? It's a, it's a big old. So I don't know that. Have, I don't know that if we are going to put in a manhole, that the sewer is going to be difficult. Dump yeah. yeah, dump station. You could do a dump station it within it, not have hookup sewer hookups, but have a dump station. I guess I know a good spot for that. <laughs> well, most long-term RVers nowadays have a poo wagon. They just take the take the black poo tank wagon. to the thing and dump it themselves and put the tank back up. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll look into that. Okay. Yeah. I'll talk with the guys tomorrow <laughs> or then, Friday because we're close. Storm water coming down off of mm -hmm. what Chris talked about. That part of the parking lot. I mean, if you go there in like early spring and stuff like that, when we have these downpours. But that's all. That's all grading. That's yeah. just a great yeah. 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 And yeah. then we can divert it to one area and take it away. Mm -hmm. Like down here in the top west corner, there's a ditch down, drainage down. Yeah. Kind of drainage into that little waste area. Everything's going to have to come off over there. So, one thing we're going to have to get into the details on is adding a dumpster enclosure. I think that would make most sense being kind of central and near the restroom in the revised layout for this. We're going to look at you know where to locate entry signage and rule signs. Um, so can I make a comment about the dumpster? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking your best spot for it is directly across from G, yeah. because we have a household garbage issue out here where if you leave an out a can out and it's not locked, someone will bring their household garbage to it. Sorry. The reason I wouldn't put it by the restroom is I think our dumpster trucks we're gonna have needs to be like right off the thing. So he rolls it out, he dumps it, and he drives on an asphalt thing and gets the heck out mm -hmm. kind of thing. Okay. And currently it's closer to like, they're pretty near our park house just for that. Okay. But I don't know okay. if there's a normal thing in campgrounds. <laughs> they're usually near the restrooms and the restrooms are usually fairly central to, yeah. the, to the campground. Um, on the way out? It's just, so on the way, say, ours are on the way in or out, yeah. the dumpsters, okay. just because it makes, if we put it somewhere difficult, we'll have issues with with the trucks. Yeah. Okay, okay, have, we'll look at that. Have you ever figured out, a, like, a not an RV, you're involved to have a welcoming station um, <coughs> where there's a, the host that actually is in there during the, 
the money, collects the money and the fees, or put a, uh, a pay station in that little welcoming booth, uh, mm. maybe right off the, sometimes the park host isn't going to be there, and they're, where are they going to pay? Well, so most, of, if we do it like Anderson, that's on Rover Pass. So you can still come pay the park host, but most people are reserving it online. Oh. Like on, because we're, we have a system Rover Pass that you can, Say I have an extra car. This is the size of my thing. What spots fit me? It's kind of like we give them our map, and then we set up all the things they can purchase. But I like the idea, Rick. If this is where the park host is, maybe in the green that's by G would be like the signage that matches all the other park signs where it says, "Here's what's happening," or "There's a fishing tournament," or "There's you know a little kiosk area." Okay. Um, one thing that, you know, is part of our contract is yeah. looking at phase one and phase two. So the idea is that the full build out, everything we presented to you would actually be phase two. Phase one would be more of a, a primitive approach. Um, we're going to be pushing for the grant, so we're only going to be looking at phase two for the 60%, uh, frankly, just due to the schedule. So yeah. uh, we're going to be pre uh, preparing 60% plans for the full build out. But after that, we're actually going to produce two plan sets. One would be more of a primitive approach. Um, we would probably only do around half of the campsites. Uh, probably no paving and no restroom, but essentially they provide the city with a plan to implement this summer if you, if you chose to. Um, thinking gravel parking, you know, gravel access drive, gravel parking, still getting some taking table and fire rings at the campsites. It would be overlaid with the, the final plan so that when the grant funding comes from OPRD, you could come in and pave along basically where you just gravel and all of that. So, so you just wanted to mention that um, we're going to be working towards. So phase one though, John, <laughs> are you going to try and get underground stuff in? I wouldn't want to grade the road unless these guys have the water and sewer lines and whatever conduit for electrical needs to be underneath the ground and then we cover it all up in the primitive road? Knowing that the city's going to probably sell perform all the utilities, I would say yes. Okay. Uh, and we would want to get electrical conduit yep. in the ground. Just we so we can pull it later. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Pull wire or pull strings, but we don't have to, you know, uh, just so it's laying there. In just, yeah. to, just the conduit. Okay. Uh, get it all on the ground, so I would say yes. Okay. So we're going to be working towards that, uh, but with that, any final comments? I just have one other question. <clears throat> this might be getting into the weeds. Will you all like it? So this is a interesting site in the fact, in the sense that it was a, you know, it's sort of a, I wouldn't say it's a super fun. It used to be an industrial site. It's a wetland, but it's a recovering wetland. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on with both the soil hydrology and the site. Um, do you all do, or is part of your scope like a, like a, and you mentioned that you're going to try and save some of the trees and stuff and work with the existing trees. Do you all do like a, a actual planting plan around the, like, around the, you know, final design of the, the campground area? Yes. And do you, so, and part of that, I, I, I'm just thinking like, you know, we, we, there's a great palette of like native trees, native plants. Do you guys use and specify just like, like native trees and stuff that are going to go and plant. Okay, cool. That's, that was my question. Only goldenrod. Okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no scotch fruit. Only goldenrod. Yeah, there's a lot more Oregon oaks out there. That's me. Let's do a whole bunch of scotch fruit. Yeah, anyway. Got to be there on this option. I said the parks committee almost went feral on me <laughs> for mentioning the color of scotch fruit. <laughs> It's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help that it's your favorite. The color is. Dale's been killing it down below all of these things every chance he gets, but yeah. <laughs> I like it. 
you know, the bringing in that primitive primitive approach. Because there's going to be a lot of earth moving in this yeah. project. There's there's a, quite an elevational change down to the bottom and, and all the grade and plan. Put the gravel in and let it sit over winter. Oregon winters seem to settle the ground very well yes. around here before we start trying to pave or yeah. get fancy. I think it's just a smart move. And just kind of, yeah, plan for next, going into next spring and next summer. Yeah. So just coming up to do the secondary phase with the pavement and everything. Which kind of disrupts the camping, but hey. But if we get catch it, April, if, if it gets primitive, they're trying to get a lot of people down the line. Right. Yeah. And if you catch it April, May, and start doing some of that stuff, some of the very first good weather we get, then it's set up by June, July, and August. So we'd be ready to go about then. Because once you get guys on that, it's not going to take a lot long. It's great. And it's settled. It's not going to take long to pay. So. All right. All right. Thank you all. Very Thank much. you, John. Yeah. Oh. Hold on. Do you want to adjourn it? I'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you again, John. <laughs> and I'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.